The European Union is expected to present a ban of all Russian oil imports to its ambassadors as early as next week. However, the EU's plan will likely fall short of an all-out embargo in order to win support of all of its member countries. Yeah, joining us now is Valdis Dombrovskis. He is the executive vice president for the European Commission. That is the executive branch of the European Union. He's also the commissioner for trade for the EU. Uh, Mr. Dombrovskis, if implemented, how would this ban help the Ukrainian people who are going through so much right now? Uh, well, uh, first of all, it's clear that we must continue to provide all necessary uh, support to uh, Ukraine. So uh, this includes uh, financial support, uh, political support, uh, military support, humanitarian support. And we must continue to put maximum pressure on Russia to stop its aggression. And uh, since the uh, beginning of Russia's uh, aggression, uh, EU has already implemented five rounds of sanctions. And currently we are uh, discussing the sixth round of uh, sanctions, which indeed, among other things, may include uh, uh, some kind of oil uh, embargo. It's uh, uh, basically to uh, limit the Putin's ability to finance its war machine. Mr. Dombrovskis, earlier this week, Ukrainian President Zelensky submitted a questionnaire for obtaining EU membership for his country. Can you weigh in on the prospect of Ukraine actually joining the organization? Uh, well, uh, uh, Ukraine is a European uh, country, and uh, we believe its future is in the European uh, family. Uh, we are now uh, at the beginning of this uh, process, so indeed, uh, the Ukraine has now fulfilled uh, the first uh, political uh, questionnaire. There is another one which uh, concerns the implementation of uh, EU's uh, legislation uh, across different policy areas. But what can I say? We are starting this process towards acknowledging Ukraine as EU uh, candidate uh, country. Mr. Dombrovskis, uh, there are reports that Ukraine is currently in talks with the EU to establish uh, a so-called peace bond for retail investors. Can you explain what that is, what it would do, uh, and what the goal is in pursuing this effort? Well, uh, uh, it must be noted that uh, uh, Ukraine is facing a financing gap between 5 and $7 billion a month uh, as long as this active warfare is uh, continuing. So, uh, and here also in the IMF and World Bank meetings, we had lots of discussions how international community can help to uh, cover this uh, financing gap, what European Union can do, what United States can do, what international financial institutions like uh, IMF and World Bank can do. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, it's uh, to be seen as part of this uh, effort uh, uh, also uh, this uh, Ukraine's uh, idea to uh, uh, emit retail uh, uh, peace uh, bonds. So it all goes in the same direction to uh, cover the short-term financing needs to uh, ensure, uh, well, half is normal functioning of the state uh, given the uh, circumstances. Mr. Dombrovskis, the European Union has been remarkably unified in its response to Russia's invasion. But considering the economic and political ties some countries have with Moscow, how has this been achieved? Uh, well, uh, I would say it's uh, clear that we are uh, facing uh, uh, Russia's aggression against Ukraine, which is illegal and unjustified. Uh, we are facing an attack on entire European security order, because uh, uh, Russia's propaganda is not making secret out of this, that... Uh, uh, if uh, Putin is successful in Ukraine, Russia will go further. So, uh, therefore, in, uh, indeed, it's very important that as the EU, we stand united and we stand firm against Russia. Uh, clearly, there's going to be economic cost, but this cost is worth uh, paying for defending, uh, defending democracy and peace. Mr. Dombrovsky, uh, the uh, European Union and Russia, of course, are major trading partners, at least they were before this uh, invasion of Ukraine. Can you tell us how that may change moving forward and the global implications uh, of, of severing uh, at least some ties between the EU and Russia moving forward? Uh, well, uh, uh, there are decisions which are already uh, conceptually uh, uh, taken, like, for example, EU moving away from its uh, dependence of Russia's uh, hydrocarbons, of Russia's uh, fossil fuels, 
and actually doing so uh, rapidly. So I'd say uh, uh, regardless even of these sanctions work track which we are currently uh, uh, discussing, uh, we already presented uh, uh, initiatives how we can reduce uh, EU's dependency, for example, of Russia's uh, uh, natural gas supplies by two thirds already by the end of this uh, year. So it's clear that we cannot be dependent in our supplies uh, 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 from the country which is uh, openly threatening uh, and invading other European countries. Well, Dr. Dombrovskis, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.